All right, guys, so yesterday Packers general manager Brian Gutekunst had his end of season press conference where he addressed multiple things about the offseason for the Green Bay Packers, including Jordan Love, Aaron Jones, David Bakhtiari, Jair Alexander, and the free agency. So in today's video, we're going to go over the main takeaways from everything Brian Gutekunst said in yesterday's conference. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. We're going to start with what he said on Aaron Jones and his future as a Green Bay Packers. Packer. Brian Gutekunst says he wants Aaron Jones back next season. Quote, he was such a difference maker when he was out there this year. The way our offense was able to move, he changed a lot for us when he was out there and he was healthy. He's the heartbeat of our team. Gutekunst also said that he absolutely wants Aaron Jones back as a Packer. Now, Aaron Jones is under contract for 2024. So as of right now, yes, he will be back as a Green Bay Packer in 2024. And it's really nice to hear this from Brian Gutekunst that he, no matter what, wants Aaron Jones back in the green and gold for at least 2024. Now, the reason it's a question is his upcoming salary. So if we bring up Aaron Jones contract here, we see in 2024, his cap hit jumps all the way up to $17 million. Then we also see he has a few void years added onto his contract. Now that would all get accelerated into 2025. If you know, he were to leave the Packers after this season and the Packers would owe him $6.6 million in 2025. Uh, the, the thing is about Aaron Jones is I, I don't think it's going to remain at 17 million. Will Aaron Jones take another pay cut? Probably not. I wouldn't want him to, right? Like Aaron Jones has definitely earned his money. He's earned this contract and he deserves the money, right? So I think the Packers likely will restructure him in some way, shape, or form and push more of this money out into another void year or maybe even give Aaron Jones a one-year extension. Um, so if they were to do a max restructure, they could save up to $7.79 million off the salary cap this year. So that would bring his cap it down under $10 million for 2024. Will they do a max restructure? Probably not because then that pushes another $7.7 .7 million into next year's void year, which would then make it over a $14 million cap hit next year for Aaron Jones not being on the team, which then they would have to eat in 2025. So I think they'll push out some, maybe $4 million, maybe half of the max restructure, kind of lowering that cap hit down to $13 million for this year, way more manageable, um, and then go from there. So it, it looks like on all accords, Aaron Jones will be a Green Bay Packer in 2024, which I'm sure a lot of us are happy about. Next on the key takeaways from Goot's press conference was when he was asked about Jair Alexander and his future with the Green Bay Packers. When he was asked if there's any consideration in trading Jair Alexander this offseason, Brian Gutekunst gave a very simple no answer. And this much was obvious to me. I thought there was no way, shape, or form that they were going to trade Jair this offseason. I know there was some talk going around on Twitter and, and in my comments as well as, oh, Jair is going to be traded. I never saw this happening due to how much money you know he's tied to with the Green Bay Packers and how also he responded from that suspension I think he handled that very well and Gutekunst also went on record saying that he, he he likes how Jair handled that suspension and I think he's gonna you know fit perfectly into this new defense under Jeff Halfley an aggressive man cover one whatever it may be style type of defense where he allows their cornerbacks to press up and play their game. I think Jair is going to excel in this type of defense, and I think he's going to be excited to be a part of it. And I don't think there's any way the Packers are going to trade him, and obviously not, because Gutekunst yesterday just plain out said no. So to anyone that was still saying that Jair is going to be traded, uh, he's not. And speaking of defense, since we're on the topic, uh, not many changes for what the Packers want in defensive players. Brian Gutekunst said this is a 4-2-5 nickel league. And basically what he means by that is teams are going to be playing nickel regardless. So the Packers, you know, were running a 4-2-5 nickel or a 2-4-5 nickel. It's the same thing. Um, it's just whether your uh, edge guys are listed as outside linebackers or defensive ends. So the Packers very well could switch to a 4-3 and have Preston Smith and Rashawn Gary um, and Lucas Van Ness as defensive defensive ends and uh, all the other guys interior as defensive tackles. It's, it's not going to switch much because the Packers are still going to want to come out in nickel. So they're still going to come in a four man front with two linebackers and five defensive backs. That doesn't change much from a three, four to a four, three, not much of that changes, but we could still see from a technical standpoint, a, a scheme switch. Gutekunst was also asked on a potential extension for Jordan Love entering the last year of his contract. And Gutekunst confirms that he and the front office plan on working with Jordan Love and his representation on on extending his contract in the next couple of months. Would you like to sign him to a long-term deal this offseason? Yeah, you know, I think we'll, we'll we'll go down that road. You know, I think um, certainly 
I think that'll be important for our football team to have some stability there. Um, you know, Jordan and his rep representation, I think they, you know, they're really good people. So we'll start working towards that, you know, sometime this um, next couple months. I believe the Packers can look into his contract and give Jordan Love an extension uh, in May. I think that's when they're able to to look at that contract. Um, bringing up his contract right now, we see his cap hit in 2024 is, is $12 million or only 5.1% of the salary cap. He also has void years added onto his deal, pushing out $5.2 million of that bonus. This is obviously all going to change the outlook of this contract. What his cap hit is this year should probably go up by $10 million or so around that mark. So his cap hit likely will jump from $12 million to you know, 22 to $24 million. That's kind of my guess is what they're going to do and then somewhat backload that contract into future years like everyone else does with every other massive contract. But the fact here is that the Packers are going to give Jordan Love an extension and it's going to happen this summer and it's going to be a mega extension. Now what those numbers are going to look like, I'm not sure. We'll go down that road when we see it, but the Packers are going to pay him as a top quarterback in the NFL, which he does deserve and he'll be the future uh, quarterback of this team for at least the next five years. Then Brian Gutekunst was asked the big question about David Bakhtiari's future. We're all kind of sitting here wondering what are the Packers going to do with David Bakhtiari? What do you think are going to be some of the considerations they're going to have to make uh, moving forward with David Bakhtiari? Yeah, again, we're still at the very beginning stages of looking at, you know, how we're going to move forward with all that. Um, obviously, David's been through a really rough stretch with the injury stuff, and he's, been, he's going through a very major um, surgery uh, trying to get back to be able to play. So we're monitoring that. I know he's working his tail off, and, um, you know, we'll kind of once we get down the road and see where he's at, you know, health-wise, um, we'll kind of make those decisions. So it basically seems like Bakhtiari still has a long way to go from that last surgery he had, which is the same song and dance uh, we've been hearing for the last three years. So unfortunately, I think this is the end of David Bakhtiari in green and gold. Uh, do $40 million against the cap in 2024. That's not going to remain regardless. So even if he is a Packer in 2024, that's going to be either restructured or something's going to happen, but it's not going to remain at $40 million. And I think the easiest route here is to cut David Bakhtiari before the new league year start with a failed physical designation. Then the Packers are on the hook for, I believe, $1.2 million of his base salary, plus also all the other bonus. So then the Packers would still be saving over $19 million off their salary cap for 2024. That's the course of lease restriction, in my opinion, is simply cutting Bakhtiari before the new league year start. I know a lot of people are going to go, well, we'll trade Bakhtiari, trade him. He has trade value. You can't trade until after the new league year. And at that point, the Packers have to be under the salary cap. And then if they do trade him and he goes to another team and fails a physical, then he reverts back to the Packers. Then if if they want to cut him at that point, then he can file an injury grievance or it's easier for him to file an injury grievance. Then could fight for the entirety of that money for 2024 and put the Packers in a very bad position. So I think, sadly, the, the easiest thing to do here and what's going to happen is the Packers cutting Bakhtiari before March 13th. And since we're on the topic of left tackles, Brian Gutekunst on starting left tackle Rasheed Walker. He did a lot of good things. He's got a bright future and he's only going to get better. We're excited about him. Just furthermore, cementing the fact that Rasheed Walker is going to be the future at left tackle for the Green Bay Packers, and it makes David Bakhtiari more expendable. They already have a left tackle in place. They could very well draft one in the fourth, fifth round like they're, they do all the time. Um, and just move on. They have Zach Tom at right tackle. They have Caleb Jones, who could take over for Josh Nyman's spot, who likely will leave in free agency. They have Luke Tenuta, who I know the Packers really like. Um, he could be a backup tackle. So the Packers actually kind of have a lot of depth there. Where they're kind of weak is in the interior, which I think they will address either in the free agency or the draft. Uh, but David Bakhtiari, at the end of the day, is, is expendable because of the contract and because of Rasheed Walker, who the Packers and Gutekunst clearly like a lot and will likely be the starting left tackle in 2024. Finally, Gutekunst was asked about the potential of making some moves in free agency. And I know a lot of us are going, oh, it's the Green Bay Packers. They're not going to make any significant moves in free agency. Or you have the people saying, oh, they have no money. They can't do anything. The Packers can clear upwards of $50 million by pushing money out. And again, Probably not the best idea, kicking the can down the road even more, but they could if they wanted to and they wanted to go all in and, and bring in a lot of free agents, to, you know, go for a Super Bowl, they very well could. So the whole argument of they have no money is a tired one. They can make money. Brian Gutekunst said that as long as it makes sense, the Packers won't shy away from signing an impact player in free agency. Quote, this is about winning and trying to win a championship, he says, even if it means pushing money into the future. So exactly what I said. The Packers are going to push money into the future if they have to, to bring in the talent now in the window that they have. Obviously, Jordan Love still being a young quarterback. He's going to be paid a lot of money, which also affects the ability to bring in other free agents, but 
in terms of other positions that they're not paying much for. Every single receiver under contract to this team, all combined, their cap hit was lower than Alan Lazard's last year. So there's a lot of guys on this team, and also tight end, that are cheap right now. So the Packers could maybe bring in some other veterans, whether it's on offensive line or defense for the new defensive coordinator. The Packers could definitely go out and, and, and sign a, a, a top free agent. Whatever opportunities are out there to improve our team in free agency, we'll be able to do that. Kudakun's talking about the flexibility Packers have with five picks in the first three rounds, includes in a long answer, quote, maybe trading those picks for veteran players, who knows. So it really seems like Gutekunz is on board to pushing more of this money out, creating a nice amount of cap room for this offseason, and bringing in free agents if he needs to, to really round out and solidify the weak points of this football team, whether that be at safety with someone like Geno Stone or McKinney from, from New York, or at linebacker with someone like Patrick Queen or on the defensive line, or even a veteran wide receiver. It seems like all options are on the table and the Packers are going to create money and they're going to be in the running for certain free agents. Again, I'm going to make multiple videos going over position groups for free agency and what the Packers may be looking at and what players could fit in this team and with the new defense. So if you want to see those videos, leave a like down below. But that's about everything. Brian Gutekunst are the main takeaways he said during this press conference yesterday. Uh, got a lot of good answers from him. Usually in these press conferences, you don't get too many solid answers or too many straightforward answers, but he got a lot of good ones, you know, in this one, basically saying, you know, Aaron Jones is here to stay. Jair is here to stay. Bakhtiari kind of one foot out at this point. Jordan loves getting an extension and the Packers could be players in free agency. But that about does it for this video. I appreciate you guys coming by. If you could, please leave a like down below, but I'll catch you on the next one. And as always, go Pack Go.